Good morning everyone, I'm Sam and I'm here, as you can see today, at Paul Stevens 911. Paul Stevens is a 911 specialist who sells all sorts of 911s and stuff like that. And then they also make their own sort of backdated 911 and they sort of do custom work on cars for people that want to modify their Porsches a little bit. So let's go inside and have a look. And as if by magic, behind me, we now have a Paul Stevens Club Sport, and this is the Le Mans Classic Edition, which is a tie-in with the ACO and Peter Auto for their Le Mans Classic event. Uh, they're making 10 cars. It's in the Le Mans Classic colors, the, the white, green, and black. And the car can come in a few different versions of this color, but I believe they're all gonna be white. So basically you could have it black with green and white, green with black and white, etc. Let's have a little bit of a look around the car. From here, it sort of just looks like an old 911, but as with all of these sorts of things, it's all about the details, and Paul, I was sort of had a, was chat, having a chat with him earlier, he is obsessive about details. So that is something that really comes through when you look at this build. So let's give you the basics of the car. So this is a 3.2 Carrera. So it's like a 88, I think, 87. I'll put the info overlay now. And they have sort of tucked it and tidied it pretty much everywhere. So from the front, the things you may see, you may not even notice there is a little black lip here now it has got the longer front sort of rsr style but it's longer but they put decided in part of their development process that to make this black to make it look a bit cleaner and a bit neater at the front but while still getting all of the same features of having the low front but this is this is like a rubber so when it hits the ground you don't get that originally it was fiberglass and that's been adjusted here you can see some intakes i think that goes in for the air con and then this is a bit more cooling towards the wheel well and the brakes and stuff like that. Here we have some very modern lights that actually just look kind of classic. You can have the frosted glass over the front, which they really do just look like the old lights, except with some serious lighting, the little Paul Stevens badge. And then let's have a little look around these more aerodynamic wing mirrors, all of the the gutter lines have been cleaned off to make it smoother. It's just been sort of tucked, nipped and tucked everywhere. Coming around to the duck tail. Now, I didn't realize, but Paul pointed it out. If you look at our old 911, and the beauty of being here is I can pop inside and they've got all different types of 911s for sale. So you can, I'll put in some footage of a, an original duck tail. The original duck tail sort of sticks out like this and it's not smooth. So all of these panels, this panel, this ducktail, is a Paul Stevens version and it just looks original, but it's all, all the lines, it's smooth, everything fits really well. This all had to be redesigned. It's got a slightly different profile, but when you look at it, it just looks right. But actually the amount of detail that's gone into it is significant. Coming around the back, we've got a classic twin exhaust. And then we've got just a little design element, these little little holes. A little bit helps a little bit with cooling, but mainly a sort of style feature. And just generally all around, all of the panels, everything just fits really nicely. One of the things I was asking Paul about is his perfect sort of idea of what a 911 should be. And as much as he himself and myself, and I think most people like, RSRs and those sorts of things. On the road, it's actually much better to have a narrower car with, there's a certain grip to power, to weight, to size ratio that works really well. And I remember talking about back in the day, Roof with their CTR and stuff like that. They found out that at the narrow body car and with all these sort of this smooth lines and stuff, was significantly faster in top speed rather than the, the wider RS. So let's have a look inside. This is where you start seeing some of the significant changes. And this is where 
this car probably starts to deviate from my car significantly in terms of all the fit and finish. Now, oh, coming back here, this I believe is a 964 window and it has these seals, which the seals on earlier cars start to go and when they get been in the sun for a long time and you start to end up with water and stuff like that coming through. But these are all, these are all good. Having a look in the car. Now, fundamentally for those most people will probably say, oh, it's just a 911. And it is a 911, but everything has been massaged. So let's just look at the door. Got this little, little pouch, just sort of phone and stuff, a little nice tied in door pull. The speakers are in there, but hidden behind. And you can just see that. You've got electric windows. I've got this sort of dished steering wheel. And then these these green, cool green dials, because this is the Le Mans classic edition, this, the clock sort of goes to 24, but down in the pedal box, just little details. They put on this plate here and then had a backing on it and it now looks just really smart and nice in comparison to how it might have been before. And going around with Paul, <laughs> we've got these seats, these are, these are pretty comfy and it's, this is a, a custom fabric just for the Le Mans edition in these colours. Let me go around the other side and we'll have a look in the back. So coming in the interior here, we start to see some of the things that Paul has really tried to sort of distill into this car. And one of those is modern fit and finish. Because if you get in an old line 11, and I'll show you some clips now of just some of these parts, like for example, down here, I don't know whether we can see it. I don't know whether you can see, but here, this is all now super neat. So if we come in, all of these lines, everything here is all very neat. This, I think it's called the knee roll. If you compare that to in my car or a, a 3.2 Carrera, it's all, there's all like big gaps and stuff. When you look down here, this is all super smooth. Let me try and get in the back. When we look in the back, now everything in the interior is custom. If you just look at all these little fit lines, this whole thing is completely different to a standard 911. I'm gonna come in and look back here, we've got a little, little pocket, and then this is the touring version of this car. So it's the more comfy cruiser type thing, rather than the super lightweight one. And we have the luggage pack, or sort of set area here. So you can put luggage in here. This particular car has this quite, quite neat, secret storage area that just clips in by magnets and you can't see it so you can hide some stuff in there but you can pop your luggage in here and it won't bang around and you can put this down and you've got all this space it's nice i would say the biggest difference between this car and my back day or or an original from the era is the fit and finish of the interior it is really it feels really nice in here here we have these green seat belts i love non-standard color seat belts they're pretty nice we've got a bluetooth audio and all that sort of stuff let me grab my my phone one second the option they've gone with here is you can have a little magnetic case on your phone your phone will stick here and then you can use ways and all that sort of stuff will connect with the stereo and you just put a little magnet magnetic case on it and it will stay there sort of a simple solution, but quite effective because your phone's gonna change in size and all that sort of stuff over the years and it will still connect and you don't need to have a crazy setup. Otherwise, this little button here is aircon. I've told it's, it's pretty effective. I'm actually having the same system fitted to my back date, but I didn't know that before, before I was coming here. Here we've got, all oh, these are little changes. These are actually aluminium rather than the plastic. Just all these little knobs and stuff. Right, let's have a look in the front. You've got to pull the bonnet latch, like usual in a 911. You've got the little heating heater, right and left. This car has electronic fuel injection, so you don't have the, the third lever to do the throttle. It just turns on the key. Okay, let's open the bonnet. Now, this is a customer's car that is being worked on at the moment. And because of that, they've removed the bonnet strut. So I'm just gonna hold it open 
with my head. Now, I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna go inside in a minute and show you what the interior of the bonnet of a classic 911 looks like, because this is very, very, very neat. Normally it's just a bit of carpet. And then all these little details, we've got the, the fabric and the Paul Steesant logo. And then, look at this, this pops open. I believe that just goes down there. And then we have the toolkit, that's all very nice. And we have the triangle, and then I believe one of these pops open. And then under there we've got the stuff for your tyres and things like that. Which is just actually, it's just pretty neat, isn't it? Oh yeah, under this little flap we have, what's that, water, washer fluid. They were thinking of putting a cover over that, but it's working on the moment. This car is it's not quite finished, but pop that down. Quickly walking around to the back. I'm not going to pop the back open because this car has a different engine that is sort of a work in progress to the engine that most of the cars are going to have. Most of the cars have a 3.4 and it's quite a revy, about 300 horsepower. Nice revy, decent amount of torque sound really good type engine but the owner of this particular car came and drove a bunch of different cars different 911s which is one of the things if you're coming to spec a car you can come in and Paul will come and go through the car with you and say maybe for example go and drive a few different old older 911s of different eras you can drive a 964 993 3.2 Carrera and the owner of this particular car drove all of these different cars and said I, I love the engine that you're going with but I'm not going to drive it that hard so I would rather have something that was a bit torquier and you sort of use between like two and six thousand rpm rather than six and eight thousand rpm or for example so this car has a 3.8 litre engine from a 993 so it's a much more torquey engine it's still about 300 horsepower still the performance the same but it's a much more sort of i would say relaxed experience to drive so i am now going to go and get in the car and have a drive here we are inside the paul stevens 911 club sport le mans classic edition how do i feel straight away well, seat's pretty comfy. I might, this is an adjustable one, so I'm gonna break it up a little bit, get my position right. The pedals feel very firm. Ooh, this gearbox feels a lot nicer, a lot more positive than my, my back date. And then, right, yeah, so. <laughs> the first thing I've noticed, <laughs> I've looked at the speedo and <laughs> it goes all the way up to 180 and <laughs> like 30, 40 is basically just like this tiny little bit at the bottom. Let's go through touch points of the car, things I've noticed. Well, straight away it feels a bit more refined, quite a bit more refined than my car. The gearbox, always oh, nice. things I'm noticing about the interior. I don't, I don't have a lot to compare this to in terms of like a, I haven't driven a 73S or something like that, or even a, a 3.2 Carrera. So I can only compare this to my back date. And immediately the powertrain feels different straight away. Just the way the pedals actually, the setup, it feels, it's, it's got a lot more sort of punch straight away. It feels like a really torquey engine in this car. I know this car, the customer wanted a slightly different engine to what would be in the, the conventional Le Mans Classics, but let's just talk about the driving. Steering feel, it's very direct, it's, it's wiggling, it's not tons. <laughs> just love that air-cooled noise. Now this this is a customer car, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it. I'm just gonna sort of get a feeling for how it drives. 
have a little cruise around, get an experience of what is Paul's vision for a sports car. We're going to talk to him a bit later, get him on the podcast. But right now, I'm, I'm driving. I feel like you could haul, you could haul ass in this car. S slowly getting used to the powertrain. It wants to be, it wants to be revved. So different to all these modern cars these days. You get in a new GT3 and this, this feels like you could go pretty quick. Obviously it's not the same as having 500 horsepower, but this car weighs, it's like 11, 100 kilos, something like that. It's, it depends on spec with whether it's got aircon or the lightweight version. Uh, the lightweight they got down quite low, I think under under a ton, but this is like 1100-ish, maybe a little bit more. You feel it, it feels like it's a small car, but I'm, I'm getting nicely warmed by the heater. We've got aircon, this little button down here if you need aircon. What else do we notice? Looking around, I like this the way the luggage is in the back. If you, that would definitely stop stuff being chucked around if you chuck it around there. All in all, everything's just been massaged a little bit to, and you still get that old 911 experience. It's still an old, older 911 and you get that noise. But a lot of it's changed, like the, the engine with the direct injection and stuff over the carbs in my car mean you can just start it you don't have to have any funny like press the throttle three times and all this sort of stuff. This car just starts when you want it to start. It goes when you want it to go. And I think something, the joys of having a car like this is if you're, maybe you're into modern cars and you like the idea of an older car, but you're not really ready for old cars, if that makes sense. Like you're not ready for the full experience of the pluses and the minuses of having and actually running a classic car. This has had a lot of stuff done to it, all the, you know, everything's been treated, so it's not gonna rust away straight away. If the gearbox doesn't feel, like the gearbox in my car is the, is the previous generation, not the G50, I think it's, is it the 105? Um, I'm having a bit of a, a mind blank, but this feels really direct and actually sort of makes me think that maybe that's a change I would do to my car, but it feels super direct. Let's just get up to fifth. It's not super short like a modern car, but it's also very, it's quite a nice car this. I like it, I like it. I, f I feel sorry because I've come on a day that's been, it's been raining and <laughs> this car's gonna need a good old wash when I've hand it back, but I'm enjoying it so far. And all the all the touch points, like the steering wheel is really nice actually. I like the, the leather's really soft and just feels quite good. And it's it's got a bit of an angle on it so it comes closer to you. How fast does it feel? Well, in gear, it's punchy. It's not, it's not crazy modern supercar fast, but I think 0 to 60 is four and a half seconds, something like that. Top speed. I think it's 160. Where, where are you gonna go 160 miles an hour? But it's actually a really usable speed that you can wring out the gears without ending up going silly fast. And this is a car for backcountry roads. I think it would it would do quite well around a track and it's got it's got a lot of grip. But I think if you're used to modern stuff, you should come and drive, or you should come and drive any, go and drive any old stuff, but come and drive something like this. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice blend of the two. I love, I love that air-cooled sound. There's nothing, it's just so different to modern cars. It's just a different, that organic sort of rushy noise you get. And this is the thing about cars like this. Right now, I'm going 60, 60 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, down a country, British country back road, and I'm not breaking the speed limit, and I'm enjoying myself. I'm having to 
pedal. I have to feel the weight. I'd love to go out with someone, well, one in a, in a car where the, the, maybe with the owner who's, who's pushing it really hard. I'm not really pushing it that hard at the moment. I'm just sort of driving it moderately quickly and I'm getting massive swells as you can see. I'm having to row my own gears. I'm having to, well, get the front turned in. And it's a small car. When you drive these cars, that's probably something you wouldn't necessarily think about. You could go and drive in a Ventador or whatever, but you come in this car and it's tiny. And now, <laughs> oh. this is a good red road, this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. How do I sum up this Paul Stevens Club Sport and, and then the Le Mans Classic Edition? Well, it's it's a very well sorted back date. It's but like when you talk to Paul, and we're going to have him on the podcast, so have a listen. The his obsessiveness to detail and getting the fit and finish correct is is pretty great, and that when you I think with his cars, it sums it up really, is they don't shout, they're not massive. This one is a bit more so than the, the other ones, the classic touring, but they don't shout like I'm a, let's say a singer, for example. You know, you know a singer's a singer straight away. They're a bit more refined, like in terms of body style shape, they're not as wide. And it's about the small details of just all of the things. And also someone who just, who wants like a 911, but they want a really well, done sorted one that will start every day i would i would love this ignition system on my car when we were in sweden driving it in the snow and stuff it would have been quite nice but overall it's really good it's really good top work now time to drive a little bit more One of the things we were talking about earlier, I was saying, with my car is it potentially has so much grip. And I think a lot of people that drive a car like this just basically say it's got so much grip. And it's just that the, the weight balance of a 911 and stuff you do. And I think the amount of power that this car has, which is about 300 horsepower and really usable torque, is that's actually quite a good amount of power for a car this size. As soon as you start going bigger, or if you go for more of an RSR style kit or style car you have much bigger rear tires and then that ability to really sort of feel it on the limit a little bit or not, not not on the limit just to feel the weight moving around and the tires and everything like that squirming a little bit you lose if you go grippier and i think we're in a good sweet spot with this amount of power for the roads that we drive on day to day if this was a fun car for the weekend or you could drive it every day if you wanted. There's no real reason why not. You got your phone in there, all of that stuff, and then just have a hoot. I'm driving it in the wet. I'm not scared. It's got loads of grip. Oh, I love Porsches. Oh, I love Porsches. <laughs> and then, Sometimes people watching my videos say, Sam, why, are you, why do you, have you ever used a manual gearbox before? You seem to change gear all the time. Well, I drove up here in my S4 and that was all paddles. And now I've got the chance to have a really nice gearbox with a really great sounding engine in a fun car. I'm going to change gear just for the sake of it. Like I'm in third, I'm going to change up to fourth. Why not? Because then I get to change down again and give it a blip. That is satisfying. Cars these days, ugh, they get rid of that. And I think that's why a lot of people are moving towards cars like this, this sort of era, this sort of ilk, that have been massaged a bit and are just a really nice version of an older car that you can use more often. But also have, in, and then in this, it's just the attention to detail, that the fit and finish is really seriously good. And you can have all, there's all sorts of different options and stuff, and it's, it's about tailoring it to the driver and the user. But overall, I think I'm, I'm going to give this a massive thumbs up. Obviously, I love old Porsches, but this is a very well done one. And um, 
I sort of get, I get it now. I get what Paul's trying to do. He's not trying to be someone else. He's not trying to design a different car. It's just what he likes in a car. And this is, this is what he likes, I think. And it's, it's pretty good, I think. Time to give it back, unfortunately. And that is it, that is that been out for a drive in the car. What was it like, what are my thoughts? Oh, I just love classic old 911s and particularly backdated 911s because they just, the things you use all the time, like stereo and blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff are just a better, but you still have that raw old feeling of driving an old car and a small car with tires that you can use at sort of sensible road speeds. Ah, oh, it's, um, that was really good. Thanks very much, Paul and everyone for having me down and letting me drive this car. Ah, oh, how does it compare to my back date? As a driving experience, there's a few changes. So the gearbox is a bit different. The engine in this particular car is, is quite different, but fundamentally it feels very similar to drive. The interior is just a whole nother level on this car. And it sort of makes me think about all of those cars of this sort of ilk that actually underneath there are any old good 911 that you can play with, do the suspension or whatever, will drive amazingly. And then the things that you're paying more for are just the tweaks, like whether it's a little bit more power or the interior and all of that stuff to be developed along. But I thoroughly enjoyed my drive in this car. Thanks very much everyone and see you in the next video.